Hi there, Mark here again. Welcome to this, which is my build video of the Wild One Off-Roader Blockhead Motors Edition. And um, looking forward to doing this. In fact, I've already started a bit of it. Um, it's going to be a little bit different, this video, to my usual build videos. I'm not going to go through every step um, in great detail because I've already got this one and I've done a comprehensive step-by-step -step build guide for this and I'll put a link up to that there if you want to see everything in detail but uh, as far as the Blockhead Motors version is concerned I'm going to just whiz through um, the build guide and I'm going to focus on any of the main differences between this and the standard version and also uh, some of the little issues I found along the way such as um, the shocks uh, show you a few tips for those and uh, maybe another few tips along the way. So uh, let's get started. So very unusually for a Tamiya one of the first things you have to do or well, the first real step is you've got to cut out some stickers. <laughs> uh, yeah that's uh, a new one on me normally I do that right at the end for the body but this is because these are going to be stuck on the chassis so the first thing we've done is cut that out and uh, get your chassis and we've got to stick these on. So yeah there's all little cutouts to go around each of the little pieces that stick out so I'll just get these two um, stuck onto the chassis and we'll step on to uh, step three. Okay with those stuck on just make sure you've got no uh, extra sticker sort of overlapping the edges because uh, as Shen RC says that's where you'll start to get the sticker lifting and get dirt stuck behind it and it'll start coming off so yeah just make sure you trim it off if it's overlapping that's that bit done. Step three is different from the uh, standard kit because this is doing these new yellow lights. Um, you get two sets, the, the ones it tells you to put on are the bigger ones, but you have got the option of the smaller ones or you could perhaps use those at the rear um, for uh, red tail lights if you wanted to, but I'm not going to put those on yet. You also need to cut out the, uh, the lenses by the way, so those need to be fitted into the light. But I'm not going to do that because at a later date I'm going to upgrade to uh, a, a set of LEDs um, for all the lights. So I'm going to do that as I say as an upgrade. So for now you get these spare chrome ones for the kit. Um, just the two that go on the, uh, the top of the bonnet. So I'm going to be putting those on for now. Step four is attaching the front damper stays. Which are these nice uh, aluminium uprights. So I'm just going to get those on just four screws. For those, as I said, I'm not putting the front headlights on, so I'll miss those out and straight on to step five, and I'll whiz on a bit through that too. So step five is making up the front axle, which is basically screwing your bumper with the three screws. You've got this uh, fibre plate, and then you've got these two pieces. Uh, that's that. What I've also done, as you can see, is I've uh, put the trailing arms on and uh, the axles, the front axles which is actually shown in step 7 but uh, yeah I've already gone ahead and fitted them on uh, in 7 and 8 so as you can see you've got uh, your steering arm uh, with the ball joint at the top the brass ball joint and it should look something like this so yeah simply a case of get your chassis um, as you can see you've got the uprights on another little tip there is to use uh, allen head bolts or hex bolts um, they're M3 uh, 10 mil long they just look a bit nicer and uh, they won't rot or rust so yeah and simply get that put into place and you've got four screws that hold that on. So with that front bit fitted we've got the suspension ready we just need some uh, dampers now to uh, complete the front suspension. So step 9, 10 and 11 show you how to make those dampers up and I've just followed the instructions and this is what you get if uh, you build it as it shows stock. Um, and there is a little bit of a problem here, it's basically, I hope you can see this, the uh, bottom shock mount, uh, or the cap there, uh, doesn't hold the bottom spring, bottom of the spring properly, um, and so, yeah, it moves around and it can easily, as you can see, it gets kind of uh, twisted, and can catch, can you see that? And it rubs away on the body of the shock and as it's aluminium it gets all scuffed up and it makes horrible scraping sound. So there's a really easy little fix for that um, that uh, Adam from Adam's Playground told us about on his channel. Great channel, uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, so he's come up with a, a simple tip of putting an o-ring around the top of that little silver retaining clip and I've also got a little bit of an addition to that because as you can see it actually moves at the top as well 
Um, so I look for a way of trying to reduce that movement at the top. You see that the spring doesn't really fit. It's far too wide really for the body. Um, I, I could, couldn't get an O-ring to work so I've used a bit of tape. I'll just show you how to do those little mods now. What you want is an O-ring uh, of approximately the right size. Simply place that over the bottom of the shock. Replace the retainer and then get that O-ring and simply um, place it on top like that as you can see and if we put the spring down it holds it in place and stops it wobbling around does a great job so just to stop the top bit from moving around now all I did is I cut a thin piece of electrical tape um, beware because the spacer to slide up and down there on the shot body and uh, as I say, stick the end in place and simply wrap it around and it just uh, gives you a bit of packing for that uh, the top of the spring. So you can see it doesn't look too bad, uh, the spring slides over the top of it and uh, yeah, now that spring doesn't go anywhere and we've got a lovely smooth working shock. So thanks Adam. And to finish off, all you need to do is put this bracket, which is an MA39, and a bolt, and that's the uh, shock assembly complete. So that's the shocks mounted, and uh, yeah, that wasn't too difficult, and lovely and smooth they are too. Look at that. They look beautiful now, so that should be about as good as you're going to get them for uh, your off-road running. And uh, yeah, so I've sped on a bit there's step 12 13 and 14 here as you can see we've got this post here you need to put on that's for the uh, body you've got the uh, side bars those are on there and you've got the rear suspension shafts which are held on by these two pieces e5 and e6 um, screwed on from inside this kind of case here and the last thing is what it calls these gearbox stays, you can see I've already fitted the one there it's just simply a 10mm screw, you can see that, that holds it on from the top and on my standard version the other side was held on the same which is this one, uh, but strangely for this kit I don't understand why, it's telling you to put a 3x18 screw which is that there, um, from the top uh, and screw it through, you have to screw it into the plastic and you've got that and then you hold it on the bottom with uh, a washer and a spacer and a, a nut I don't understand why that's the case for this one but basically it's held on like that with a machine screw so straight onto the gearbox and the only difference I've done here to the manual is uh, in here on the small bevel gears as I've put the uh, Tamiya AW grease, great sticky stuff that is and you also need to put some if you're going to do this little change onto your large bevel gear there and the one obviously that's sitting behind there and that will just stiffen up the diff a little bit um, but don't put the AW grease around the actual outside uh, or onto the idler gear because um, or is that the pinion because you don't want those parts all being tacky so we'll just use the ordinary ceramic grease that came with it there and the other little tip is to go all the way around the mating surfaces of the gearbox halves here with a bit of grease just to keep uh, the dust and dirt getting uh, inside. Ha! No, it's the spur isn't it? Uh, so make sure you get the other um, bevel gear on top of um, the differential there before you put on this gear and uh, then we can close up the two halves. So this is where we're at at step 20, we've got the gearbox fitted now in that cage at the back as you can see, you've got that uh, metal plate there, you have to attach the gearbox here and then to the rails and then you've got the two points here where it connects. So the next little thing I want to show you is what I've done to the drive boots. Now this isn't quite so bad on this uh, version uh, as on my original wild one or my standard version I should say um, but I did find that these drive boots were very loose and they were just falling off the uh, drive cups 
I don't know if you can see here but you can see it's a very sloppy fit and uh, I just want to make sure that I keep any dirt and dust from getting in and obviously ruining my nice greased up joints and my dog bones so what I've done is get another o-ring and um, what I've done is got one that's about the same size of, as the uh, the drive cup just um, place it over the top as you can see there so that's about the right size and hopefully with this over the top of the drive boot uh, if you can see that there just about see it's still black on black but uh, now that's really holding that tightly and there's definitely no dirt and grit going to get in that gap so I'm going to put one of those o-rings on each end of the, each drive boot and that should uh, make sure everything's nice and clean and that's how it looks at the end of step 22 we've got the uh, rear arms on and we've got the drive shafts as you can see and the boots in there uh, on each side for step 24 I'm just going to fit the stock motor for now I find my other one works fine with that motor in and uh, I've gone for the lower gearing which is the 15 tooth uh, goes in the scroll as you can see there uh, the one by the L for the lower gearing and uh, while you've got this cover off it's just a good point to uh, just check that everything's meshing up properly just give it a good turn you make sure everything's all lined up those gears are lined up and meshing nicely before you put the cover on steps 25 26 and 27 are making up the rear shocks and I'm happy to say they all went together quite nicely as you can see they're very firm these springs are a lot stronger than you might think um, but yeah you can see there's a decent amount of damp in there and I'm happy to report that uh, the springs don't move on the back so they're ready to go so step 29 to 31 is onto the electronics so your servo saver should look somewhere like this when it's uh, installed and uh, you can see your servo posts there on either side so that's going to go like that way around and it's a good idea to push your servo around and just make sure that those uh, jaws are opening up and the servo saver is working okay before I fit that uh, just a quick word about the steering arms you can see you match them up to the diagram and you've got these tiny thin really flimsy steering arms or tie rods and uh, just as tiny uh, ball adjuster on the end now it does tell you on the instructions here to cut this lip off that lip there and if you can just see that but um, this is actually only screwed on uh, I don't know two or three turns so it's just caught right at the end of this rod there's hardly any of that bar going into that uh, ball end so just to keep that little bit of extra length what I did was instead of cutting it off like so straight across I've actually gone round and trimmed that little lip off so it gives you an extra one or two millimeters and I think that's uh, definitely worth doing okay and with the servo fitted now I think the best way to get the shafts in line um, is not to try and use these ball adjusters because there's so little adjustment left on them is uh, so you just before you tighten up these two screws that hold the servo from underneath um, they are in slots and if you can see that moving look and uh, what I do is get that get a ruler try and get them as straight as possible um, by using those slots uh, before you do up the screws okay then so it's time to get some stickers on uh, I've already put one on the side just to check how it goes on I do like the way the uh, the white contrast with that lovely blue color looks great and uh, as you can see I've just uh, started to test fit this I've cut a little strip off at the top and what we've got to do is make sure this is lined straight down that uh, ridge on the bonnet and uh, yeah slowly try and get this into place so yeah before I press it down just making sure that it's aligned with both of those lines I think that's about right and we've got a little cut there to uh, join at the front as I said to take it steady and you'll get there in the end okay I'll just go on and uh, do the rest okay so the next thing I want to do is the uh, the driver's body or the cockpit or both so I've put a bit of uh, flesh paint on his face so I need to get some uh, black 
detailing around that uh, rubber there and around the bottom of the helmet. So we're going to get that done with our black paint. And also, I want to get rid of these stupid boxing gloves. I really don't like these. Um, it looks like it's got the biggest hands in the world. So I want to get some black again. And I'm going to brush paint around here. And I'm going to reduce the size of those ridiculous hands. So yeah, hopefully that should look a bit better. Put a bit more detail. There's a bit of the edge of this box here um, that's on the inside. That needs to be black. And also between his legs, um, it's white at the minute. That's going to be black. So I'll just get on with that. So that's the driver then, it's as good as it's going to be anyway, a bit more detail on there like I say and uh, with his hands reduced down yeah, that looks much better. So before I fit him though I'm just going to show you another little tip. What I don't like about the standard setup is that the uh, battery lead comes out the side here and uh, you connect it on the outside and the, the battery lead comes out here and connects it on the outside it flaps about all over the place. Well just to show you without making any mods at all there's this like uh, recess here inside the chassis and you can see I've just pushed my power connector through there uh, there's a battery in there so if you just look underneath with the clip on you can see the battery connector um, the standard NIM pack fits in no problem at all so yeah that's a, another little tip for you we don't have to have that battery lead flapping about outside okay so the rest of the build is quite straightforward to be honest with you uh, and here it is totally finished and uh, yeah I've got to say as usual when I finish one of these Tamiya buggies it looks fantastic doesn't it it's uh, yeah a step up I think from the stock one uh, well that's my opinion everyone's got a different opinion so yeah just to finish off then we've got to uh, just finish off the roll cage with this one bar across there fit that in you put your roof on you've got your rear racing number plates uh, just a quick mention about that in a minute there's the aerial that you can fit if you want to, I do like that, there's just uh, kind of screws on down there. And you need to put this netting on the windows. Now it does show fitting with these provided um, bands, the um, cable ties, but uh, I thought it looked much better with just a bit of twine, so I've got some grey twine. Uh, I think that'll hold it on okay, it just looks a bit neater than these things. Also you might notice that I've fitted these chrome headlights they do come with a the kit, they're spares, um, they're like the standard ones that come with the standard kit and you, you've got some spare stickers so you've got these round ones there I've just used those for the fronts, just ties them up uh, as I said I will be looking at doing an LED upgrade later with the, the four lights but uh, yeah we'll see how we go with that and just to put it on these number plates they look okay I suppose but there's only one mounting which is one bolt holding them on uh, they're a bit flimsy as you can see, I don't know how long they're going to stay on and to be honest Tamiya, come on, I mean I could have made those in my shed uh, you think the might of the Tamiya factory would have come up with something uh, a bit uh, sturdier and uh, that fitted a bit better than that, but anyway uh, like I say, it does complete the racing look I think with those numbers so there you go, I don't think there's anything else really I can add to it um, I hope you've enjoyed the video as usual, if you've stuck with me this long then thanks very much and like I say always, I hope you join me on the next one. Bye.